All right, everyone, it's time to talk about the UK's election yet again. Last night, it was all polls that I was looking at. Like, the exit polls looked great for the Conservatives, looked absolutely dastardly for Labour, and the, the Lib Dems basically don't exist as a party anymore. But that's exit polls. They can be wrong. Uh, but the real results is pretty close to the mark. I think Labour lost a few less seats than they expected, but, I mean, the Tories have a substantial absolute majority. Lib Dems are nowhere to be seen. They lost their leader, Joe Swinson, and now, because of the crushing defeat, Jeremy Corbyn, who won his seat, he got re-elected to his position in Parliament, but he's not going to be Prime Minister, He's or, or leader of Labour, rather. He's stepping down uh, because of his poor leadership. And it was funny, because I was watching, and many people told me this last night. Sargon was mentioning me. I mean, I got in there, and people were already spoon-clanking. I don't even know why, because I wasn't talking in chat, and I hadn't shown up until after people were already doing this, but people were like, Sargon wanted me aboard, sent me a Skype DM. By the way, somebody who has contact with Sargon, get him to, like, contact me through someone through Twitter DM or something, because uh, the Skype he's, he messaged me on is probably dead, because I've used fucking, like, four different Skype handles, because Microshaft has decided to screw with it so much that... I mean, I don't even know what the account name is, so we'll have to figure out some way to talk if he wants me to come aboard anything anytime in the future. We should probably hammer that out because it'd be interesting. Anyway, um, I, I was watching and it was all exit polls. Today, though, we've got the actual results and they're just as bad for the left. The left has been pretty much given a clean sweep and there are two fundamental reasons for this. And there are a dozen reasons people were talking about last night. It's like they were trying to chalk it up to like propaganda Russian influence, the Russians didn't, the, the normal bullshit. Really what it is is two things. Number one was Jeremy Corbyn, and this is why he's stepping down. He's too far left, people don't like him. Uh, the anti-Semitism bullshit, which doesn't exist, he's not an anti-Semite, he's just, you know, maybe realistic about, <laughs> about the state of things in Palestine more than some politicians. Uh, that doesn't matter. What matters is that he wants to steal people's money and be like far left and be, you know, pretend he's a revolutionary. Dude, far left revolutionary rhetoric die, has been dying down for a century. Its peak was, you know, early 20th century, late 19th. Marx was a long fucking time ago. This is ancient history. These are a bunch of boring old things that should be cast in the boring dustbin of history and swept aside and burned away like the cancer that they are. Leftism had its heyday, it fucking failed and killed a bunch of people, and now the, the, the good, sensible people of England have decided to say fuck it. They've decided to say no to communism. Good for them. Their, their, their nation will continue to be developed for a good long time to come. Meanwhile, Scotland elects a bunch of socialists anyway, so they'll probably have another referendum. You know what? The English should force them out. England and Wales should conglomerate, circle the wagons here and say, look, do we really need this chunk of our country that wants to be independent anyway, keeps causing problems? Let them go be part of the EU. Let them be part of the EU and we'll do what we want to do. Say, fuck the energy sector of Scotland. Um, it doesn't really matter. And I understand some Scottish people, out there, they're really patriotic and stuff. Okay, and I've got some Scottish ancestry too through my dad. I'm like, I don't know, maybe even a quarter Scottish. Uh, but it doesn't really matter, dude. I mean, do what you want. You want to hold an indie referendum and maybe you'll lose again, then so be it. It'd be funny, they'll keep holding the vote over and over again. Then the other reason was Brexit. That's basically what it boils down to. Look, the Conservatives are more pro-Brexit. The Labour movement is more anti-Brexit. There, there's a mix-up. Some people deviate from this, but that's the general feeling. Corbyn was like, he wanted to waffle around, and then this also didn't help him because he didn't look fiery enough, I guess, to leftists that want imperialism and, and corporatism and globalism to, to enslave them and to tell people what they can and cannot do. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn decided to allow people to vote conscientiously within the labor movement, and that pissed off the more fanatic elements. But here's the thing. I'd like to talk about this as well from a U.S. perspective. Being an American, looking forward to the American election, this eerily foreshadows, I think, what's going to happen in the U.S. election if the Democrats keep moving further to the left. And even the Brexit thing has its, its similarity with the U.S. Look, the Democrats and the left in general in the U.S. have spent the last few years trying to nullify 2016. It's the same as within the U.K., people on the left and the globalist right there, basically the equivalent of the conservatives over here, trying to nullify the Brexit vote. The Brexit vote was had. It was strictly democratic. People came out and voted for Brexit. Since then, they've been rambling about the need to have another people's vote because the demographics are different. 
The, the population is not the same. Some of the older voters have died. We need to have a people's vote. This is a people's vote. This election that they just had shows the will of the population. Overwhelmingly in favor, uh, uh, by a large margin, an absolute majority for the party that is largely championing Brexit. This is a second people's vote. You have had enough. You've had enough votes. It's time to act. That the English have this problem where they're very good at talking about things and then not doing them. No follow through. A lot of theory. Very good theory. Very intelligent, highbrow theory that never gets acted upon. This is a problem time and time again throughout the world's powers in history. It happens, or look at McClellan during the Civil War, who pretty much approached battle like a chess game. He would sit there and wait while the enemy dug in more and more, figuring out how to break through the enemy's fortifications that he could have just overrun in the first place. And he got fired for this. I'm fond of bringing that up because I think that strategically speaking, it's a good thing to avoid in the modern era. The Democrats right now in the U.S. are looking a lot similar. If they nominate Bernie Sanders, they basically have their own Corbyn. They basically they even look similar in some ways. The fuddled old men. And this is the problem of the left, too. There are two groups of people that comprise the far left. Befuddled old dudes that were revolutionaries and fiery 20 years ago, who are now corporate politicians who have spent their entire life in some parliament or congress somewhere. They're not exciting. They've lost their fire because they're fucking old. They're septuagenarians, at least. And people that are still wet behind the ears who have no strategic sense, no patience, no understanding of politics whatsoever. They do have this revolutionary fervor, but they're untested. And they keep making problems. They're, they're trying to usurp political movements without the benefit of, of knowing how to actually make friends. Like, all they do is alienate everyone around them. Like the AOC crowd, the Elon Omars and the Rashida Tlaibs in the United States. Or, P or some of the younger uh, uh, leftists within the UK. They've gotten swept aside. They're all out. They all lost. Now, if this isn't a stinging uh, a rebuke of leftism in the UK, what can you call it? And this, by the way, they were saying, well, we expect the conservatives to win. But the polls are evening and Labour could pull it off. Or at the very least, there will be no absolute Tory majority. They outperformed every possible expectation across the board. No loss uh, whatsoever. Zero percent loss. One hundred percent total victory for, for the so-called right wing. Now, of course, what you call the right wing in the UK is just like, you know, maybe, maybe the Biden Democrats in the United States. It's not... When people on the left call it fascist or far right, it's funny because you can't possibly think that unless you're like an Antifa fan. You have to be delusional. You have to be a commie or at least a socialist to believe that. These people are extremely far left. The absolute fanatic fringe of far leftism thrives within parts of Western Europe. These people largely come from comfortable middle and upper middle class backgrounds. They have trust funds and they don't understand what it means to have to work for a living. They don't understand what it's like to be taxed at 20-30% on your productivity when, you'd be, when you're barely in the middle class. They don't understand. Here's the problem of the left. Labor movement, supposedly this populistic sort of working and middle class workers movement, unions and steel and coal and all this stuff, sort of just like, you know, we, we want industry, but we want to protect our workers. We want people to be able to get by and people to thrive and invest and, and have a decent, dignified life. They've left that behind. The left in the U.S. is the same. That's the old left. The old left is now considered geriatric and racist by the new left, which considers it a good thing to tax that same middle class at 50, 60 fucking percent just for existing. Well, it doesn't matter because it's mostly white males or something like that. And they use all of these buzz terms. Oh, they're all race. They just resent us because of race or gender. They don't want more women in politics. Really, at the end of the day, it's the economy, stupid. They don't want you to tax them up the ass. The British people, a lot of these people that voted against labor, I guarantee they're not even Brexiteers. They're probably, a lot of them are traditional labor voters. They looked at Corbyn, looked at his economic proposals and said, no, I'm not going to vote for the dude. Can you imagine a scenario in which Sanders or Warren gets nominated and the same thing happens in the U.S.? After, after years and years of the same shit we've seen now in the UK, which has just gotten rebuked, which is an attempt to nullify Brexit there, and an attempt to nullify the 2016 election here in the United States. That's what this boils down to. It's an ignorance by the left towards the will of the people. They can't get it in their heads 
that their ivory tower mentality of the, the very urban core of New York City or London does not speak for the wider populace, even the wider left. The union left rejects their messages. When Bernie Sanders comes out and tells union workers in the U.S., talking to them straight up, he's there with them, telling a bunch of dudes in hard hats that he intends to eliminate their union health care coverage. It looks the same as the tone-deaf bullshit you get from Corbyn. And it is likely, although not certain, that somebody like that will be the Dem nominee. They will lose. They will lose by a margin similar to what Corbyn and Labour lost by in the UK. That's a warning to the left. You may think you could get the youth vote aboard if you just nominate a socialist like Bernie Sanders. No, you can't. You will not energize the youth vote without losing twice as many voters in the Rust Belt and elsewhere that will reject your message. It doesn't matter if you call Donald Trump racist, sexist, he's bad, he's orange man, but people will look at the economy and the platform economically of the left and they'll reject the left. You called Boris Johnson all those things for two years. Oh, he, he, he loves it when kids are on the hospital floor untended to. He wants to take your health care away. He's a racist. He's Islamophobic. He molly coddles Nazis. Dude, don't you under fucking stand that you've said the same thing about Johnson and Trump? And you're, you're about to nominate potentially like a Corbyn figure anyway. Look, but, and then Biden's incoherent, so he doesn't matter. It's a lesson to be learned by the U.S. left. You either need to find someone who is sane, and other than Joe Biden, which currently you don't have in the field anyway, at least within the realm of viability, or you will lose. 2020 will result in Trump's re-election, a clean sweep of the House and Senate by the Republican Party, and you will massively lose. A generation of people will look at the Democrats as woefully strategically out of touch. It'll be worse than Walter Mondale by a, a, by a good sea mile. And it'll be amusing to me because these people don't even see it coming. Hindsight's 2020. After the election, was, oh, we need to autopsy things. What did we do wrong? I'm telling you what you're about to do wrong a year ahead. Fucking fix it. If you want to be an alternative to the GOP, fucking fix your own fucking problems. Trump's not the problem. You're the problem. Admit to it. That's about all. Peace out.